9. Underwater Post Office, Vanuatu, located just off the shore of Hideaway Island, about 160 feet or 49 meters off the coast of Vanuatu, an island nation situated 1,000 miles or 1,609 kilometers east of northern Australia, you'll find the only functioning underwater post office in the world. If you need to send a letter from here, you'll need your scuba gear or a snorkel. The mailbox and converted fiberglass water tank are about 10 feet or 3 meters beneath the surface of Malay Bay, a body of water connecting to the South Pacific Ocean. The plan to open up an underwater post office was devised over drinks by the local postmaster and a resort owner. Vanuatu Post first opened for business in May 2003. It's the world's first underwater post office. It literally makes it possible for vacationers to send postcards back home from under the sea. This small kiosk is manned by a scuba diving Vanuatu post worker. You can't just send any normal letter or parcel, though. After all, water and paper don't really mix. Instead, pick up a waterproof postcard, which will have a special embossed mark on it instead of an ink postage confirmation stamp. Divers aren't the only patrons at this strange post office. There's also an abundance of marine life, with fish darting about the stand as if they're next in line. If the post office is closed, there's no need to worry. There's an underwater post box nearby where you can drop off your items. If you'd rather stay on land, there's a normal post box on the beach, too. 8. Port Royal, Jamaica In the 17th century, Port Royal in Jamaica earned a reputation as the wickedest city on Earth. In 1655, the city came under British rule after 150 years of being occupied by the Spanish. The British were a little shorthanded when it came to the general management of the settlement and they enlisted the help of various pirates and privateers. As you can imagine, this went just as you would expect. Although the pirates brought great wealth with them, they also turned the city into a paradise for every sort of sin imaginable. One in four of the buildings in Port Royal was either a brothel or a pub. The city became so renowned for being a place of extreme wealth and extreme pleasure that it even attracted famous pirates such as Henry Morgan. The same man who's on a certain brand of rum. He even became governor of Port Royal in 1675. It quickly became the second largest city in the New World, spanning 52 acres. However, this pirate party paradise would not last for long. On June 7, 1692, a devastating earthquake shook Port Royal, killing over 2,000 people, crushed by crumbling walls and roofs and sending two-thirds of the town into Kingston Harbor. What remained of Port Royal is now a small and quiet fishing community. However, if you gain permission from the Jamaican authorities, you can explore the location's darker side by scuba diving down to the lost town's remains, which are 40 feet or 12 meters underwater. The site is in such good condition that it's even called the Pompeii of the Caribbean. 7. Christ of the Abyss, Italy Off the coast of the Italian town of Portofino, around 45 feet below the water, lies a strange statue. This figure is the San Fruttuoso Sea's Christ of the Abyss, which has been resting here for over 50 years. With its arms outstretched to the surface above, the Christ of the Abyss has become one of Italy's most notable dive locations. But why is this statue here? The statue was placed here in memory of Dario Gonzetti, who died during a diving accident in 1947. Gonzetti was one of the first Italians to practice scuba diving, so the town decided the best way to memorialize him was to create a sculpture that you can only see when you're scuba diving yourself. The bronze statue was created by sculptor Guido Galetti. The piece was requested by one of Dario Gonzetti's fellow divers, Duilio Marcante and was placed in San Fruttuoso Cove in 1954. A further plaque was then added to the 8.2 feet, or 2.5 meter tall, monument upon Marcantes' passing many years later. Curiously, this isn't the only Christ of the Abyss under the waves for you to discover. There's another Christ of the Abyss made from the same mold at Cardenage Port. The piece is to remember the tragedy of the Bianca Sea, an Italian cruise liner whose engine room exploded in 1961. 6. Neptune Memorial Reef, Miami 
three miles or 4.8 kilometers out from Key Biscayne in Miami, Florida, USA, is the world's largest man-made artificial reef. However, this reef is different from others, as it also doubles up as a cemetery. Every year, thousands of people choose to lay their loved ones' cremated remains to rest inside concrete sculptures and structures that line the seabed. They're either placed into simple molds with bronze plaques or large sculptures such as mermaids, starfish, and other marine motifs, creating an Atlantis for the departed. The Neptune Memorial Reef is not just a way for people to remember their loved ones in a way that suited them more than a traditional burial, but it's also been amazing for the wildlife too. When the reef was first built, there was practically no sign of marine life at the site. Just two years later, following a study by the Department of Environmental Resource Management, the creatures now number in the thousands. Many people come to visit, either to pay their respects or to research the animals that make the reef their home. The area is also designated as a marine protected zone, meaning that the sea creatures are able to flourish without being fished, hunted, or polluted. Would you want to have your final resting place be under the waves? Let us know in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. 5. The Underwater Sculpture Park, Granada There's something creepy yet fascinating about the underwater sculptures at Molinaire Bay's Underwater Sculpture Park in Granada. The site is so amazing that National Geographic even named it one of their 25 wonders of the world. The park was the brainchild of Jason DeCare Taylor, and in 2006, it was the first underwater art gallery the world had ever seen. There are over 75 different pieces here for you to discover. Over an area of 8,600 square feet, the water is shallow enough that if you don't fancy getting wet, you're able to view them from a glass-bottomed boat. Not only do the sculptures provide a cultural benefit to the area, but an ecological one too. In 2004, Hurricane Ivan swept across Molinaire, damaging and destroying many of the habitats of the local marine life. The statues helped to create new homes for sea creatures, and as a result, the area is now bursting with life. The underwater park also draws divers and visitors, and keeps them away from the remaining coral reefs in the surrounding areas. One of the most famous works is the Vicissitudes. It's been interpreted as not only a sign of unity and resilience, but also by some as a reminder of slavery, due to the fact that the figures are linked together and secured in place by metal stakes. The park is very close to the Middle Passage in the Atlantic Ocean, which was one of the most used routes for slave ships. 4. Sunken P-29 Boat Malta Just off the shores of Malta, you can find a P-29 Condor-class minesweeper resting on the seafloor. The patrol boat started its life in East Germany, named Boltenhagen after a town. She first set sail in 1970. Her job was to patrol the rivers between East and West Germany, detecting potential mines along the way. When Germany reunified in 1990, Boltenhagen was given a new purpose, but still a noble one. She became part of the German Coast Guard's fleet of vessels, along with other Condor-class ships, helping stricken boats and people. The Condor ship's tenure with the Coast Guard was short-lived, though, although she was the very last ship to be decommissioned in 1996. In July 1997, Boltenhagen got its first designation, when it became purchased by the country of Malta to become a patrol boat. That's when she was given the pennant number P-29. She helped to fend off smugglers and assisted with border control operations. The Maltese Tourism Board gave P-29 a makeover, cleaning her thoroughly for her final job. In 2007, P-29, formerly known as Boltenhagen, was purposefully sunk off the coast of the port of Sirkewa to become a diving site. The work has paid off, as the P-29 patrol boat is now one of the best dive sites in the world, spotting marine life such as squid, rays, and gurnards. 3. Silfra Fissure Iceland Found in the Thingveller National Park, the Silfra Fissure is the gap between the tectonic plates of North America and Eurasia. The rift was formed around 250 years ago in 1789, when an earthquake ripped through the rock. 
The fissure grows by two centimeters every year, and what makes the site so special is the fact that it's the only place in the world where you can swim between tectonic plates. The water at Silfra Fissure is also incredibly pure. When it was created, the fissure cut through an underground spring, which is fueled by the nearby Longjukol Glacier. The water has been filtered through the rock for almost a century, meaning by the time it fills the glacier, it's clear, creating great visibility. And because it's fresh water constantly trickling in, although the temperature gets cold, the water never freezes over. Silfra is separated into four major sections, the Big Crack, the Hall, the Cathedral, and the Lagoon. The fissure spreads over 1,800 feet, although there are some areas that are off-limits. The reason for this is the ever-changing nature of Silfra. Further earthquakes and movements in the rock can lead to sudden rock falls, cutting off areas or making them narrow and dangerous. 2. The Great Blue Hole Belize the Great Blue Hole in Belize is located in the Lighthouse Reef, 60 miles, 100 kilometers off the coast. This amazing natural structure stands out from the clear waters around it, as it's bordered by coral and rock in a perfect circle. The blue of the water getting deeper and darker the closer it is to the center. The hole is massive and measures over 980 feet in diameter. At its deepest point, it reaches 410 feet, or 125 meters below the surface. As for what the Great Blue Hole actually is, it's basically a giant sinkhole. It was formed from a limestone cave many thousands of years ago during the last ice age. As the ice started to melt and sea levels began to rise, the cave collapsed, leading to this vertical tunnel in the ocean. The Great Blue Hole has been enchanting divers for decades, including famous diver Jacques Cousteau, who in 1971 declared it to be one of the 10 best diving locations in the world. The Frenchman was also one of those to discover that the Great Blue Hole had been a limestone cave, even finding evidence of stalactites and stalagmites, some of which even tower 30 to 40 feet, 9 to 12 meters tall. The further down the chasm you go, the more rock formations await you. You might not want to venture too deep, though. A survey carried out in 2018 sent an underwater craft all the way to the bottom of the Great Blue Hole. After descending around 295 feet 90 meters, the water soon became toxic, with a layer of hydrogen sulfide sitting on top of it. As a result, marine life just stopped appearing. As for what was at the very bottom? Explorers found a Coke bottle, a GoPro, and the bodies of two individuals who sadly died while exploring this marvel of nature. 1. The Green Lake Austria For most of the year, the Green Lake in Austria isn't actually a lake. Nestled in the Hochschwab mountain range, the location is a park filled with walkers and people enjoying the scenery on wooden benches. However, as the weather warms up around the middle of June, the parkland is swallowed up by Green Lake. The Green Lake most of the time is just a small pond, but as the ice and snow melt and trickle down the mountains, it begins to fill up rapidly, submerging everything around it in up to 36 feet or 10.9 meters of water. Because the water is melted snow, it still remains cold, around 46 degrees Fahrenheit or 7 degrees Celsius. This allows the water of Green Lake to be so clear that you can still see the grass below, which is how it got its name. Don't expect to be able to go diving though, as this has been outlawed since 2016 in order to preserve the area's ecosystem. However, it looks just as fascinating from the surface, even earning itself the nickname of the Caribbean of the Alps. Thanks for watching. Which of these underwater sites would you most like to visit? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you next time!